Reason number one, Ned was never the hero. Therefore, Ned's death, while having brought home, together with his eldest son Rob's death at the Red Wedding, the point that nearly no one is safe, doesn't mean that John isn't safe, but rather that he is. Ned was never the hero, and Rob certainly wasn't either. But John is, in a way. Nobody is safe, but John is somewhat. He is either the ice in Ice and Fire, or he is both ice and fire. He might not get his happily ever after, but he will be right in the middle of the endgame of both the books and the show. Reason number two, Melisandre. On the show, even more so than in the books, Mal has moved on from Stannis to John. John is the savior that she imagined Stannis to be. Why on earth would she not give him the kiss of life? If Thoros can do it, why not her? Is there anything she would not sacrifice to save John? I guess no. Stannis is most likely dead on the show and nearly as likely dead in the books. What place in the story is there for Melisandre without Jon Snow? Reason number three. Ghost represents Jon's other possibility of cheating death. We have seen it in Varamyr Sixkin's prologue in A Dance with Dragons, where his body dies, but he lives on in the body of his wolf one eye. A dying skin changer might survive in a different body, especially the body of its own pet. The author chose to show us that this is possible in the same book in which John dies. A coincidence? Nah, don't think so. Why would John not instinctively try to escape to Ghost's body before he dies? Reason number four. The teaser trailer that HBO released recently is nearly all about John. If John were really out of the picture, why focus on him so much? It's not that there are no other important characters to focus on in the teaser. You just don't produce a trailer that shows you what you enjoyed the first five seasons just to rub in the fact that you are not going to get any more of it. A good trailer shows something that you want to see more of and that you are going to get more of. The teaser trailer basically says there's going to be more of John. Reason number five. There have been snapshots of Kate Harrington on the set of season six and it is basically clear that he still is part of the cast for now. Of course, this could simply mean that there will be flashbacks with John in it, or that Harrington will play a corpse or a walking corpse. However, the leaked images of Jon Snow in alleged Stark attire certainly don't look like it. Reason number six. Keep your tinfoil hat at hand for this one. John's death might have been planned by people that do not want to actually see him die. Who might that be, you ask? Probably Mans Raider, who also just might be Jon's father, who might just happen to be Rhaegar Targaryen. You don't have any clue who that is, Unsullied Show audience? Sorry, I can't help you here. Probably none of this is true anyway. Well, probably the last part is. And Mans probably wrote the pink letter. You don't know what that is either? Probably you want to consider reading the books. Reason number seven. This is connected to number six. If John were to die and not come back in any shape or form, the whole mystery about John's mother, or father for that matter, would most likely amount to nothing at all in the end. The most famous A Song of Ice and Fire theory would just be left hanging, never to be shown to be true or false. R plus L equals J would be a non-issue because everybody interested in the truth would be dead. There have been way too many hints throughout the books and the seasons of the show for that to happen. Reason number 8. It has been said that A Song of Ice and Fire, and by extension Game of Thrones, is about Rhaegar Targaryen, a man that died more than a decade before the story even begins. If that's true, Rhaegar can't be out of the story from this point on. But he would be if Jon is indeed dead. On the show, he's most likely Rhaegar's only offspring and therefore the only person who might fulfill the prophecies that Rhaegar held so dear. If Aegon the Sixth is indeed fake in the books, as most people seem to think, the same is true there. Reason number nine, Blood Raven. The fashionable answer to all questions concerning A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones nowadays. The equivalent of attributing anything that can't be readily explained at first glance to aliens. But in this context, Blood Raven might actually make sense as an answer. Blood Raven has been in contact with Maester Aemon and, at least through the former, with Rhaegar. It's reasonable to assume that both were fighting the same fight at some point. Blood Raven is with Bran, so he is linked to Jon in at least two ways. Blood Raven and Bran are most likely keeping an eye on him with some weirwood magic at the ready. Reason number 10. 
There might not be very strong plot armor in this story, but maybe there is something like prophecy armor. Most people seem to assume that somebody will have to fulfill all these prophecies, especially four of them. The prince that was promised, the last hero, Azor Ahai reborn, and the dragon has three heads. John is a likely candidate to fulfill, or at least be part of the fulfilling of these prophecies. Who will fulfill these prophecies if John is no more? Reason number 11. John has another possible way of cheating death, and this is the strangest one. The others are White Walkers. Some fan theories claim that as a Stark, a Warg, and or as a Targaryen, the others or White Walkers might turn John into an other or White Walker himself, and he might become their leader. The show has already shown that turning people into others or white walkers is a thing, and Craster's sacrifice of male children to them also occurs in the books. So John might actually become an other or a white walker if it is ice instead of fire that saves him. Reason number 12. This last one might apply to the show more than it does to the books. Kit Harrington is probably the most hyped actor on the show. He is the face of the franchise, so to say. He has been the center of action during season 5, and he is the king of Game of Thrones memes. They would not write him out of the show, even if George killed John in the books, I'd say. The Rubicon has been crossed. The show has become an entirely different beast after following the books relatively closely for a while. The showrunner simply cannot have any interest in getting rid of Kit Harrington at this point. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, comment, and visit the shit out of our blog.